Hello, my name is Julian Edgar and I'm the author of this book, A Century of Car Aerodynamics, The Science and Art of Cars and Airflow. What I want to cover in today's video is a car that's about 90 years old, one of the most extraordinary cars ever made, the 1930 Bernie Streamliner. So what did it look like? Well, here's what it looked like. Rear engine car, the engine right out the back. Quite a large car. There was room in these side doors. One side door had the spare wheel and the other side door had a cocktail cabinet. And they were the work of Sir Deniston Burney. Now, Burney had been associated with the R100 airship in the 1930s, but that airship was basically cancelled after it was built. Why? Because another airship, the R101, had crashed and the UK government basically gave up on airships at that stage. But he was already turning his eye to something else. Why not make a streamlined car? After all, airships were the most streamlined objects that had then been made and he must have been looking at his airship and then looking at cars and thinking, surely we can do better than this. And so here is the streamliner. Now have a look at it. Have a look how there's no step. There's just a gentle curve all the way from the front, all the way to the rear engine cover. Have a look how it's curved this way as well. So the airflow can flow around the sides as well as over the top. Now, he actually built multiple of these cars. You can see these have got different noses. They're actually uh, filmed going through the streets of towns with people just staring at them. But we can also see some problems. Look at these cycle guards. These exposed cycle guards are not going to be good for airflow. And we can see there's a big scoop there for the rear mounted engine. Now, what is absolutely fascinating is, well, before we get to that, look how big it is, a hugely roomy car. What was absolutely fascinating is in 2011, some aerodynamicists decided to model what the airflow, what the characteristics, the drag and lift figures of this 1930 car would have been. I've got the credit up there in the right for permission to use these images. And so we have CFD, computational fluid dynamics, where the hotter the color, the higher the pressure. We've got three images we're going to look at. Now here, we can see that the windscreen was too upright. The airflow was being brought to near halt, creating a high pressure, that high pressure trying to push the car backwards, creating drag. And the same here, even though it was curved in plan view, we still had high pressures on the front. We want to minimize those high pressures. High pressures on the front of the wheels to be expected. And then low pressures as the airflow wraps around these curves here, up and down the side of the windscreen, windshield across the top. Now, we can also see high pressure in the air intake for the engine. We want that to push air into the engine, but obviously that's creating drag as well. But notice how most of the car is colored uh, medium pressure, if you like, neither high nor low, which is really quite exceptional. Let's look now at the back of the car. We can still see those trailing bits of, of red at the front uh, where the high pressure was in front of the windscreen. But look here, there's high pressure on top of the engine cover, which means we must have attached airflow all the way across here, therefore giving a relatively small wake. And uh, again, we can see the rest of the car isn't really high or low. What about underneath the car? Wow, look at that flat under tray. Now these models were recreated. Obviously, we don't have a, a, a copy of this car in front of us. So they're not exactly accurate in every respect, but they certainly give a pretty good idea. Now, if we look at those airflow patterns, the really bad parts at the front of the car, unusual because in modern cars and modern basically anything after 1930, the biggest problems are at the back of the car, but here the problems are at the front of the car. And so what drag and lift figures were calculated? This is fascinating. Let's start off at naught degrees yaw, the airflow coming straight towards the car. Drag coefficient 0 0.47, 0 0.466. So not very good, but still incredibly good for the time when drag coefficients were typically around 1, 1 1.0. But look at the coefficients of lift. 0.23 at the front, that's high, a lot of lift occurring, and 0.18 at the back, that's still high, a lot of lift occurring. Now, sometimes people look at old cars, some of the very special aerodynamic cars of the, the 30s and 20s, and say, oh, why don't they build cars like that today? 
Well, because the lift values are too high, the cars would not be stable with that much lift. What about when we have a slight crosswind, 15 degrees of yaw? Well, the drag coefficient rises mightily, and that's probably because you have separation down the downwind side of the car, 0.58 if I round it. The coefficient of lift at the front goes down slightly, goes up slightly at the back, but still remains high. So an absolutely fascinating car, so on, an aerodynamics person from, from airships taking that technology saying, why can't we apply that to road cars? They basically halve the drag coefficient of, of a typical car of the era, but these days we'd say it has much too high a lift. And if you think of that engine out the back of the car and high aerodynamic lift, you can imagine the handling at speed would have been really quite treacherous. In fact, a contemporary account, Popular Science Monthly 1930, has the, the really funny headline, funny in a modern context, Streamline Auto can always fly. And they actually consider that to be a positive aspect. These days, we wouldn't consider that to be a positive aspect. It's a fascinating coverage of that car. I cover a whole range of really, really interesting cars going right from the 1920s right up until the current day, a century of car aerodynamics, the science and art of cars and airflow. The book's available now from Amazon in each country. Thank you.